Hi, thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two for this very special series we're doing on health insurance and Medicare in particular. Um, we've already done eight different videos. We've got a couple more to do. We want you to see all of them. They're very important, not just for people over 60 or over 50, but for the whole family, because our expert, Aaron Zolrod, is really an insurance broker for all people, not just for uh, Medicare. And uh, Art, you're the person who uh, is particularly interested in this next subject. Yeah, we've had, uh, uh, we have a very close friend who has a uh, uh, long-term care policy. Uh, he was very successful with uh, professional, let me just say that, younger, and he, he, he paid a lot of money, I know, over the years uh, for something that most people don't have, which is long-term care insurance of one kind or another. And right. uh, he's in a position now where uh, they're actually, they have almost full-time round-the-clock care at home uh, for uh, a condition they have, but most people don't have that. So can you uh, perhaps uh, uh, help us with the ins and outs of long-term care? I can, I can, and this is another policy I'm gonna talk people out of, um, believe it or not, um, and I'm gonna explain why. It is something that we could all use. The problem is people who bought it and it needed to be bought purchased when you're 40 or 50, it can't be purchased when you're 65 or 70, it's just too expensive. And the problem is that people bought it at 40 or 50, 30, 20 or 30 years ago, what long-term care cost then compared to now, they didn't buy anywhere close to enough coverage. So I have met plenty of people who wanted me to look at their long-term care policy. You know, they're in their 70s or 80s and they're concerned um, and they bring me the policy and the problem is it's only policies for $100 to $150 a day, which is only enough coverage for $3,000 to $4,500 in a month. The problem there is a long-term care facility with nursing care, like a nursing home, okay? I'm not talking about, you know, there's places that people can go that are in their 80s where they're, they're, they still, you know, bathing themselves and feeding themselves and they go to, you know, they go to a, common area to get served their meals, that's different. I'm talking about when you need nursing care. Um, memory care is the big one now, right? For people with Alzheimer's, um, that's the really big one and that's who needs it most. Those places, guys, are eight to $15,000 a month if you're at a facility. And if you need round the clock care, it's as much as $25,000 a month. So you bought a policy that provides coverage for you know, three to 45, or even if you had a policy that was $200 a day, and I don't know that I've ever seen one, you have coverage for 6,000. Really, if you're middle class at that point, all you're doing with one of those policies is postponing, postponing your assets being drained. Because if I have a policy for 35 that pays, that pays $4,500, but the home is 10,000, I still have to come up with 5,500 a month. Right. If I've got one hundred fifty thousand dollars saved, that's going to go fast. And when I meet these people, and what's happening to these people also, they're they're they're, they're, they're the, the companies are calling and say, oh, by the way, your premium's going up, and if you can't afford the premium, we have to reduce your benefit, your daily benefit, and that's happening. And what I advise those people to do is get rid of it. Get rid of it. You might as well enjoy that extra couple hundred dollars that its policy is costing you, because you're just postponing being broke. You know. Unfortunately, long-term care is an absolute drain on wealth, an absolute drain on wealth. Um, and and it's, it's really, unless you can buy a policy that's going to give you $10,000 worth of coverage a month, you, you, I don't even know what, I don't even know if you could buy one, number one, and I couldn't even imagine what that would cost. Even if you bought it in your 40s and 50s, I would have to think that would be a very expensive policy. And I'm not sure it'd be worth it. Um, you know, you'd almost have to get a financial advisor involved and say, OK, if I buy a policy for a thousand dollars a month at age 45, you know, I'm going to pay for this thing for 25 years. How much money could I have made if I just had invested that money? Right. It, 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 
So, I mean, I don't know that I, I don't sell them because of this, because I'm not going to sell something that I don't know when people need it. Is it going to work for them? And so I'm just not comfortable with it. And, and, you know, what I would tell people to do is I would tell you, if you have one of these policies, get it looked at. If it's $100 to $200 a day, it's not enough. And what I would do is I would go see an elder law attorney and I would start making, taking the steps necessary to protect your home and to protect some of those liquid assets you have. There's ways to do it. Now it can't be done on the fly. So if I get, if, if I find out, you know, if I find out my father needs long-term care at 90 years old, I can't go see the elder law attorney and protect his stuff because there's a five-year look back. They're going to look back five years. They know what I'm trying to do. But if we plan today, you know, John, if you plan today, Art, if you plan today for this happening in 10 years, you go see an elder law attorney. You can, there's, there's lots of things you can do. You can put homes in trusts. You can, you know, you can give them to your kids. You can, you can sell them to your kids. You can put a mortgage on them. There, there's a lot of different things. I've sat down with some of these people and asked these questions. You know, you're, you're much better. The better investment is a, is a good elder law attorney and doing it now, you know, during when you're 60, 65, 70, before you get into that situation where your faculties are, 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 are you know, are fleeting. Um, that would be my advice. I, I, you know, uh, go, go see an elder law attorney. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is a, a touchy subject because, first of all, we're currently we're in a period of high inflation, uh, highest inflation since uh, whatever the 1970s or something. Um, but inflation is always with us, even if it's only one percent or two percent. Uh, think about uh, I think my my parents could have bought a house in the 1930s and it would have cost them ten thousand dollars. <laughs> you know, today that house would probably be. Eight hundred thousand dollars. So we're we're anytime we're dealing with something that far out, whether it's ten years or thirty years, or particularly mm -hmm. if you bought your long-term care insurance at forty, at the yeah. age of forty, you're dealing with forty to fifty years out. Um, yeah, and and, there, and and there's no greater inflation than than healthcare inflation. Mm -hmm. So even when we were we were at 0.1 percent inflation or we were at negative inflation. Healthcare every year was still five, six, seven sure. percent. So yeah. even when there was no inflation in any other market, healthcare was steady five, six, seven percent. And I'm sure now that everything else is at five, six, seven, twelve percent, I'm guessing that healthcare might even be up in the twenties and thirties. And part I of it's labor. It. You know, part of it's labor. That they have to pay nurses more money. You have to pay home healthcare workers more sure. money to get people to draw them into even work and 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 you know, um, I hate to tell people not to buy insurance, but this is one thing I just don't recommend. Mm. You know, go find out if you're going to buy a policy, you better buy it that covers you for 10 grand a month minimum. Yeah. Because you're because if you don't, you're not going to have enough. Well, and even if, if today, even if you could buy and help long term care insurance for 10 that would pay you ten thousand dollars a month in 40 years, not going to be enough. Right. It might not be enough then. Listen, this is this is a really serious issue that we need to tackle in this country and unfortunately you know we tend to govern in crisis and we are we are pretty much at the crisis point already that there's just not enough rooms there's not enough home health care aides there's not enough workers in nursing homes that if you ever go into one of those god forbid listen i don't know if you guys have ever been in a skilled nursing facility i've been in them this was pre-covid they were short staffed then and they were miserable places and I could, I had to go in and see clients. I could not get out fast enough. They're yeah. not, people are not being cared for properly. And, you know, as people are living longer and Alzheimer's and dementia is becoming, you know, so much, so common, uh, there's, you know, something's got to be done. Right. Well, I mean, that's we're, actually we're, one of, one of the, one of the premises of, of uh, our, uh, our show and our audience is living longer that they're getting things that are parents and grandparents would get because they died, you know, 65 or 70. So they have the advantage of yeah. never getting the cancers and the Alzheimer's and the Parkinson's and all the other right. things that are so prevalent today because people are living long enough for these things to begin to, to happen. And also, you know what, John, I think that uh, uh, th this was a, 
a good point for us to say that we should probably find an elder law attorney because I know I that in great. certain states, and it's, it's different all over the country, in certain yeah. states, for instance, you can make a declaration of some kind, even if you have assets, that yeah. that protects you even when you get closer to that. So uh, we'll have I to think investigate the, that. Yeah, the, the important I, message I, I is... My, my, attorney, my attorney specializes in elder law as well, and, and I've interviewed him before. He would be great. I'm sure he'd be willing to come on. Oh, great. Good. We'd yeah, like that, to meet him. Great help. But I think yeah. the important, I know the important issue topic, is... The important yeah. issue is that you, you ba you've basically declared that uh, uh, you don't you don't sell long term care insurance because it's the likelihood is that it's going to be uh, unless you're very young it's going to be way too expensive and even you can't estimate what it's going to cost because tens of thousands of dollars a month yeah. is not going to be covered by most policies that you could afford anyway. Correct, correct. This this is a, a very topical topic uh, because. In past years, the government, and still even more, the trend is that the government, our government, is subsidizing uh, health care, encouraging more long-term care. Um, I used to, we just moved five years ago from a gated senior community, and half of it was dedicated to long-term care mm -hmm. facility, the kind where you move in, you've got your own apartment, and then you can go into a assisted living and then you could go into, you know, feeding you by, you know, hand feeding you they had in a, a hospital yep. bed. Yep. And it's the trend right. is for more and more of these things right. to be built every year. And they're, they're building. It's a campus, right? So you have you have the people yep. that are living independently and just want yep. some meals cooked, just want to come and get, you know, 10 meals a week yeah. to the person who needs somebody to come in, maybe just help them clean the yep. house. Um, to sure. people who step who by need, step, step by, I mean, all the way up until you need the total, you know, cognitive care, the memory care that because yeah. you yeah. don't. And by by, by the way, I have a solution for that. For me, I've already told my uh, my kids if I get to that point, uh, get me a fully charged iPod that has uh, Beach Boys uh, in a shuffle mode, just playing over and over again, and put me on a on a if there are any iceberg left. Uh, someplace on iceberg, and, you know, do it the good old fashioned way. Put me on an ice flow and just push me out into the ocean. Yeah, and, and wave, you know, I was going to say goodbye to art. Yeah. yeah, I really think a great, I really think a great show for you guys were to be maybe a discussion on, you know, and I know this is controversial, but on on euthanasia, I I just don't, I I, I just think. I don't, you know, I've always said, if I don't recognize my kids, my wife, if I can't feed myself, yeah. if I can't go to the bathroom by myself, I don't want to be a burden on anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that I'm a true believer that I should be able to write my will today of sound mind and body that says, if I get to that point where yeah. I can't feed myself, breath myself, bathe myself, recognize my kids, that I want to be put in a room, put the Beach Boys on or Metallica, put me on some Metallica, mm -hmm. put the turk switch and turn the gas on and let me right. fall asleep and and honestly i i it, we, uh, that is part of a solution because you know my father's 90 years old he's on the verge he's so close to not being able to dress himself mm. um he's already to the point where where his wife needs to fetch him every meal he can't cook yeah. his own meal he's very close to the point where he can't dress himself and he does not want to be there yeah um and he does not want to be a burden on 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 his on his wife or on on his children and i get it um and i think that'd be a great show topic for you guys too it, it is it's mm. a it is a, an important topic um no matter what your approach to euthanasia is or um final care if you will uh everybody needs to have a power of a medical term yes right power of medical attorney or yes. whatever they call it medical uh, and medical and, power of attorney yep, absolutely and they need to discuss it with the the people yes. they're giving that uh, power to what they want what they don't want yes you, you know i've got a dnr do not resuscitate i do too after a certain period of time i do too i have so that i i think all of that's very important Oh, and art, John, good the, idea. The power of attorney, yeah. the power of attorney is so important. I'm glad I'm going to touch on this really briefly. People don't understand this. You yeah. have to have one for you and your spouse has to be reciprocal. Then yeah. you have to have secondary, you know, second and third in case both of you 
are incapacitated. Sure. I don't know if people are aware of this, but if you're on a if you're on a a life support, and your spouse can't even decide to to pull, can't be without a power of attorney, cannot be done. Then right. it has to go to a judge. It would have to go to a judge. Yeah. For, for, for that to happen. Yeah. And you you'd be shocked that you insurance companies won't even talk to the spouse to give information without that power of attorney. It's crazy. Yeah. Everybody and, should have a will and power of attorney. Yeah, we actually did a uh, we had a great uh, guy on uh, a couple of years back, and it's still remain today on uh, living trusts. And yeah. uh, and uh, in 100%. fact, uh, we both uh, John and I both uh, went uh, and had him create a trust for ourselves, and he included in the package DNRs and uh, yep. pour over wills and all sorts of other yeah. things that nobody ever thinks of. But if you have that piece of paper and then you need it, yeah. uh, it makes life yeah. so much easier. And it's surprisingly inexpensive. It's, right. it, it's surprisingly, it's not that much to get that stuff done. Yeah, so. everybody should go to Celebrating Act 2 and look up um, the, the uh, uh, trust video that we did uh, with uh, its excellent information. Still valid. I wanted to point out one other thing since we're talking about long term, these long term health facilities, care facilities. They basically take everything you have because that's the only way right. you can pay for it. They take your Social Security, they right. take your Medicare, they take your uh, home, uh, they take your savings. You sign everything over to everything. them. And what, what people don't realize is you also sign over to them your medical power of attorney. So oh, I did not realize that that's that's very common, because if you end up in their whatever that is, the highest care bedridden hospital section. They're not necessarily going to listen to your spouse when she says, no, don't pull the plug. They they want to at some point they they need to they need that bed. You're right. So, you must and anybody who does that goes into those one of those facilities. You must investigate them in great, great detail. Well, you know what I'm I going agree. to at this point, I'm going to suggest that this has been such an upbeat episode that I think it's time for us <laughs> to end here. Okay, I, I think that's a good idea. I don't, I don't, I don't honestly, I don't like talking about it a whole lot either. So yeah, yeah let's. I'm well, so let's let's go to something that's really exciting. Is our next and. Uh, Maybe final episode of this series is the future of Medicare. Yes. What does the future hold? We're gonna we're gonna hang it. We're gonna tell you in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Watch the next episode. <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.